Hello, I am Flash Isaac. This is Flash Ninas. You are now watching 120 Days to Jam. This is a series containing 120 videos to prepare you for jam. Each episode of the series contains introduction, outline, detailed class, questions, and homework for you. The questions and homework are from the Flash Learners Jam application. Install Flash Learners Jam app today to access all the free features. Click activate and scroll to buy activation key to get access to the golden features. Don't be scared, the app is affordable. Do you have trust issues? Simply chat me directly on Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Telegram for installation and activation instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to take off. You are welcome to episode 2 of the 120 Days to Jump Chemistry with Flash Isaac. And remember, in this series, we are following the jam syllabus as well as questions and assignments from the Flash Nenas Jam application. The first thing Jam expects you to know in chemistry is separation of mixtures and purification of chemical substances. Matter is divided into pure substance or pure substances and impure Substances. Pure substances and impure substance. What is a substance? Anytime you hear substances or a substance, elements or compounds should come to your mind. Now, element is a form of matter or it's a substance that contains only one type of atom. Only one type of atom they make up elements. And when two or more elements combine, chemically they form compounds meanwhile when two or more elements or elements and compounds or compounds and compounds come together physically they form what we refer to as mixtures in mixtures each of the components making up the mixtures they retain their own properties while for compounds the property of compound is different from the property of elements that make up the compound so the pure substances are elements and compounds. The impure substances are mixtures. Mixtures. So element is a substance that cannot be broken down or split by an ordinary chemical process. Compounds are made up of two or more elements combined chemically. The first 20 elements or examples of elements are Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, and calcium. We have so many silver, gold. These are elements. Now, when elements, let's say this is sodium, symbol for sodium, and this is symbol for chlorine. When they combine, they form sodium chloride, which is common salt. This is compound. You cannot separate them by an ordinary means. More of this when we get to periodic table and chemical combinations. Now, mixture are made up of substances combined physically. And each of the components of the substance or of the mixture, they retain their property. An example of mixture is air. Air is a mixture containing oxygen, about 78%, oxygen, about 21%, carbon dioxide, about 0.03%, noble gases, impurities, dissolved gases, argon. These are the components of air. And each of the components, they retain their properties. Oxygen, as a component of air, is what supports burning. Nitrogen is against burning and other gases, dust, particles. That is mixtures. Now, elements, compounds, and mixtures. A mixture can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. In homogeneous mixtures, 
There is a uniform composition. The components of the mixtures, they combine, they are uniform. For example, if I pour sugar inside water, that is a mixture. But you see that they blend perfectly well. So that is a homogeneous mixture. How about I pour water inside oil? You notice that the mixture is not uniform. They don't blend. That is heterogeneous mixture. Some examples of compounds are carbon oxide, CO2, sodium hydroxide, limestone, CaCO3, magnesium oxide, aluminic acid used as mordant in dye. These are examples of compounds. How about mixtures? Examples of mixtures are air. Air is made up of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon oxide, noble gases, water, and dust. Notice something. The nitrogen is N2. The oxygen is O2. These are nitrogen and oxygen molecules. Remember I told you that atoms are the unit of matter. If you break down this matter or these materials to the smallest, they are made up of billions and billions of atoms. Atoms, they don't exist independently because they are small and very reactive. They therefore exist as molecules. So, molecule of oxygen is what is possible to exist. Only oxygen atom cannot exist. N2, molecule of nitrogen. CO2, molecule of carbon four oxide. Remember, molecule is the smallest part of a substance that can exist and retain the property of that substance. It is capable of existing independently, which means because matter, pardon, which means because atoms cannot exist independently, they build up to form molecules which can exist independently. Wisdom, wisdom. So, noble gases, water vapor, and dust, these are constituents of air. Mixture, they have constituents. Brass is a mixture. And it is made up of copper and zinc. Brass is a mixture of copper and zinc. Bronze is a mixture of copper and tin. Look at something. Brass does not have Z, but it's a mixture of copper and zinc. Bronze has Z, but no zinc. It's copper and tin. So you don't mix up brass and bronze. Sea water is a mixture. Mixture of water. Salt, dissolved gases, and bacteria. Crude oil is a mixture of various hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are substances made up of carbon and hydrogen, or compound, organic compound, made up of only carbon and hydrogen. So, crude oil is made up of various hydrocarbons. Example, petrol, heavy oil, gas oil, petroleum, kerosene, bitumen, naphtha, and urine, peace, is a mixture of urea, water, and salt. These are top examples of mixtures you are expected to know so long jam is concerned. Criteria for purity. The test to know whether a substance is actually pure or not. The first criteria for purity is definite boiling point. This is for liquids. If I ask you what is the boiling point of water, you simply tell me 100 degrees Celsius. Water, a pure water or pure water should boil at 100 degrees Celsius. That shows that that water is pure. If it is not pure, it will not boil at that temperature. So, to test for purity of liquids, the most important test is boiling point. Ethanol will boil at 78.4 degrees Celsius. That is the boiling point of ethanol. Now, for solids, the best test or the best way to check the purity of solid is melting point. Like chromium, the melting point is around 660.3 degrees Celsius. Like pure silver, 961.961 degrees Celsius. Iron, 1538 degrees Celsius. Pure gold, 1063 degrees Celsius. Impurities, they increase boiling point of liquids. Why? They reduce melting point. Ask yourself, 
Why is it that impurities increase boiling point and reduce beating point? If this is your stove, there is liquid here. As it boils, it begins to evaporate, right? But by the time impurities are present, impurities will reduce that vaporization. They will have to swallow or to cover up some molecules that are supposed to vaporize, making sure that only a few molecules are available for vaporization. So therefore, you need more heat than usual to make more of these liquid molecules evaporate and heat up the stuff. In other words, the reason impurities increase boiling point is that they reduce vapor pressure. Boiling takes place when saturated vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. That is boiling point. The boiling point of any substance is the temperature at which the saturated vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. A melting point is the temperature at which a substance begins to melt or the temperature at which a substance begins to change from the solid state to the liquid state. We have a point called triple point. It is the temperature and pressure at which solid, liquid and gas coexist together. For water, the triple point of water is 0.01 degrees Celsius and 4.5 millimeter mercury. That is the triple point of water. One spot on paper chromatogram. A pure substance should give only one spot on paper chromatogram. Chromatogram or chromatography is a separation technique to separate mixtures based on their rate of migration, their rate of movement on the paper. Different mixtures, they have their rate of migration. Even liquids, they have different rates of movement. So you use paper chromatogram or chromatography to separate uh, mixtures based on their rate of migration, which we'll see under separation techniques and principle. So a pure substance should give only one spot on a paper chromatogram. And chromatography is also used to separate colored mixture. That is the general usage. Then pure substances should have specific relative density. Density is mass over volume. Relative density is the density of a substance as compared to another substance as a standard. So pure substances should have specific relative density a specific refractive index. In waves, one of the uh, characters or property of waves is refraction. Refraction is the bending of wave as it enters the medium of different density. If this is a cup of water, if there's a spoon from air to water, it bends. That is refraction. So refractive index is a way of measuring the refraction of materials. So all this we are seeing are criteria for purity or test for purity of substances. Ladies and gentlemen, we will end this episode with a few questions. And the homework are open your flatness application, search, go to question search, type mixture, answer question 1, 2, 5, 14, and 18. These are the questions we need for all these parts of chemistry. Other parts We'll continue in the next episode. Now, question time. This question says the boiling point of a liquid can be increased only by dash. The boiling point of liquid can be increased by impurities. That is a way to increase the boiling point, not by atmospheric pressure or by further heating. The more you heat, the more you are close to the boiling point, not by vapor pressure. They don't really make sense. And the next one says. The purity of a solid sample can best be determined by its dash. When it comes to solid, to find the purity of solid, you simply use melting point. While for liquids, boiling point is used to test for purity. See you in the next episode. And don't forget to get your copy of the Flatiners Jam app.